All right, boys, today we're going to be comparing the best of the best DDR5 memory kits. So the goal of today's video is to find out which kit of memory is the fastest, which one is the best bang for buck, and which one is the most diverse in its usability. You'll see what I mean. So the kits that we have, these ones here are single rank A die. They're just like some team group 7600s, nothing special, right? These ones in the center here are the Kingston A die dual ranks. 32 gig sticks here. Uh, the ones that I've been shilling for the last couple of months, right? These ones over here are the new 24 gigabyte 8,000 sticks. So here you have 32 gigs at 8,000 megahertz. Here in the middle, you have 64 gigabytes of RAM at 7,200 megahertz. And then over here, you have 48 gigabytes of RAM at 8,000 megahertz. All these kits of RAM were benchmarked on the Z790 Apex, and I'll leave affiliate links to all this stuff down below, but wait till the end of the video because it's not as simple of an answer as you think. Now your first inclination, and mine was as well, is why wouldn't you just go with the 48 gigs at 8,000? Isn't it kind of the sweet spot in the middle of these two sticks with no drawbacks? No, you're going to see, we're going we're gonna to go over the pros and cons here of all these kits. Then we're going to go into some benchmarks as well and some Ida64 pictures. And you're going to see that each one of these kits does actually have pros and cons all the way up and down the stack. So the single rank A die sticks, okay? They are the fastest, they run the coolest, and they also scale with voltage. Um, the more voltage you can shove into these things while keeping it cool, they just keep scaling and overclocking, right? And they're also the cheapest. Affiliate links down below. The only con to these sticks is uh, 32 gigs of RAM which sounds ridiculous to say, doesn't it? But we there, we are approaching some games now where we are starting to saturate 32 gigs of RAM. Again, which sounds ridiculous. So if you are an aspiring creator and you're a single PC streamer and you're launching one of those games that requires 28 gigs of RAM, plus you have your OBS in the background, you're gonna run into some issues, even though these are the fastest. Which brings us to the 64 gig Kingston's dual rank A die sticks. Now the 64 gig Kingston sticks, these ones are almost just as cheap as the single rank A dies, which is insane. So you're basically getting twice as much RAM, 64 gigs, for almost the same price. Now the drawbacks of these ones are, they're probably the most difficult to tune because these ones come with the 5600 megahertz XMP kit. So when you enable XMP on these, it doesn't really help you get your voltages within line to overclock them, right? Also, these ones run the hottest because basically there's twice as many RAM modules on this stick. You have RAM on this side and this side. So basically you're pumping out twice as much heat per DIM module, twice as difficult to cool. So now you have 64 gigs of RAM, very cheap, very hard to tune, very hard to keep cool. Now this is the biggest pro to these sticks, okay? Because they're dual rank, they only overclock to about 7,700, right? Now, what does that mean? If you can only get to 7,000 or 7,200 megahertz on the speed, you don't need to spend $600, $700 on a two dim motherboard. You can make these ones work on any four dim motherboard. But again, before you buy them, you have to know what you're doing. If you buy these, they're 5,600, and you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna run into a performance wall real quick, and you're gonna be really disappointed. Now, what everyone is probably here for, the 24 gig sticks. Um, these ones are not as good as I thought, but they are not, I mean, they're really good. I mean, what am I saying? They're great sticks, but they're not, as they're not, they're also not bad enough not to buy them. Let me explain. 
So this kit here, it's an 8000 C40 48 gig kit, right? So right away, you're going to need an Apex, a Tachyon, or a Dark to run these, okay? A two dim motherboard. Now these, you will also not be able to overclock these unless you change the heat sinks on them because they run hella hot. Because this stick has 24 gigabytes on one bank. So each one of those memory modules has much more heat density. That's why this kit runs at 1.35 volts XMP. And even if you just enable XMP at 1.35 volts, these things will hit 65, 70 Celsius, no problem, with those stock uh, G-Skill heat sinks. So if you do end up getting these, you're gonna have to replace the heat sinks. I will link my video down below to where I show you guys how to remove the heat sinks. So if you do pick some of these up, go check that video out after because you're gonna need it. So the 48 gig kit, you won't be able to overclock them without heat sinks, unless you have like a Delta fan on them or some shit. Now the next thing about this stick is these do not scale with voltage and overclocking like the other two kits do. So with these sticks, you're going to hit a voltage limit where you can't reduce the timings anymore. And then you're just going to hit a latency wall. So then what you end up having to do is actually going to 8200 and 8400 megahertz to get that latency back down, which increases the difficulty of overclocking these sticks substantially. Now those are all the cons of these sticks, but what are the pros? The pros are, you get 48 gigs of RAM at 8,000. So with that being said, now let's go over to the benchmarks where we benchmark all three of these kits. So you guys can see the numbers for yourself and make the best purchasing choice for your use case. But before that, this video was brought to you by the supporters of the channel. They bought me these memory kits so that I could test this stuff and bring this content to you guys. So if you appreciate what we do here, or if you have any questions about these memory kits, head over to the website framechasers.org, become a supporter, get access to the Discord, join the community where we talk about hardware and all kinds of things. So with your supporter money, I can continue to do all this kind of testing with no sponsor ships, no product samples, and no bias. Okay, before we get into the benchmarks here, I'm going to show you guys the IDA64 results of all three memory kits. They were all done on the same CPU and same motherboard, uh, 13900KS, 5.8 on the core, and 5 gigahertz on the ring with a Z790 Apex. So you can see that the single rank 32 gigabyte kit in the top left there has the most bandwidth and the lowest latency of the bunch. So the difference between the 48 gig kit and the 32 gig kit is two and a half nanoseconds more or less with a max overclock. That's not going to make or break any kind of gaming experience whatsoever. Kind of a nothing burger, right? But it is, it, you can always crank the single ranks even further if you wanted to as well, right? They do scale with voltage, that's the point. So the real MVP here, though, is the top right. You get 64 gigs of RAM. It has lower latency than the 48 gig kit. You can also crank it further if you want to. And the 64 gig kit, so that those results you see in the top right, you can do that on any 4-dim motherboard. You don't need a 2-dim. So that's why those ones are so goaded. You don't have to hit 8,000 megahertz to get low latency on those sticks. Okay, let's start with Shadow of the Tomb Raider first in 1080p. Uh, you can pretty much ignore 1440p in 4K because even at 1080p, we're capping that 4090 at 90 to 100% usage as is on all three of these setups, right? But if you want to look at the best versus the worst here, single rank A die has about a 4% lead over the 64 gigabyte kit. So you give up 4% of your 1% lows and you get double the RAM. All right, Rift Breaker is up next and not much to see here. The 48 gig and 64 gig kit are tied, identical. And then the single rank 32 gig kit has a very slight 4% lead over the other two. So you're already starting to see a little bit of a trend where single rank pulls ahead by just a few percent and then the other two are together. Okay, Total War, Warhammer 3. Now this game actually showed the most scaling out of all the games today that we're gonna show. This one in particular 
scales very, very well with memory latency and bandwidth. So you can see the single rank actually has a 6.5% lead in the 1% lows than the 64 gig kit here. And then the 32 gig kit has a 4% lead over the 48 gig kit. Now, if you just take a step back here, this game is a nice benchmark and all, and it does show nice scaling between the kits here. But if you actually look at the FPS and the lows, you're hitting 340 FPS on the averages and 260 plus on the lows, right? So when if you were actually playing this game, you wouldn't have a difference between any of these. Just because it shows up on a bar graph like this doesn't mean there's actually any discernible difference to the player, right? So just keep that in mind. And as we say in this community, it's just not that serious. Tiny Tina's Wonderland is next, and this one also scaled very, very well with that single rank kit. So we have a 6% lead over the 64 gig kit, and then a 4% lead over the 48 gig kit. Now, once again, if you take a step back, this is also 1080p high settings with a 4090, right? So you take a step back and you're looking at the FPS numbers here, and you're like, damn... I'm almost hitting 400 FPS in Tiny Tina. What, why am I even worried about memory speed and timings, right? And all this stuff. So again, you put it up to 1440p or even 4K resolution, and all three of these are going to perform exactly the same. Unless maybe you play at 720p with a 4090 for some reason, right? All right, Last of Us up next in 1080p high settings, and even with a maxed out 4090, this game is completely GPU bound with all three of these configs. So, it, it, which which is insane. So even in even with a 4090, we're still capping out most of these games in 1080p. So when somebody tells you that the 4090 will last many generations, I don't know, man. We already need faster graphics cards. PCMR, baby. Okay, we're going to do Warzone last. This was on the latest Season 4 patch here with the latest drivers as well. 1440p. Now, what you're going to see here is the 1% lows are cut off. For some reason, the 1% lows are bugged out right now in this patch. I was only getting like 150 in the, on the lows in all three of these setups. And then I confirmed it with my Discord as well that everyone is just... The game is just broken right now in terms of lows. Basically, all setups are AM dipping right now. But we can still compare the averages, though. But the results here in terms of FPS are not surprising. It's basically the exact same as every other game that we tested today. So the single rank ADI 32 gigabyte kit is about 6% faster than the 64 gig kit and then 3 to 4% faster than the 48 gig kit. So between the 64 gigabyte kit and the 32 gigabyte kit, you can see anywhere up to a 15 FPS difference between the two, and then you cut that in half for the 48 gigabyte kit, right? So I would say if you're dual PC streaming, the single rank kit is still going to be the best bet for most FPS, if you're single PC streaming, you're going to want one of the other two options there. Obviously, the best one being the 48 gigabyte kit, right? But if you have a 4 dim motherboard and you're already stuck on that, you're only going to be 15 FPS behind anyway. It's not going to stop you from competing. So I think the largest difference we saw was about 6% between the single rank ADI and the dual rank ADI. So this one you get 64 gigs of RAM, you lose 6% FPS, and it works with any motherboard, right? So still probably the strongest contenders for most users. And then the 48 gig kit, this was about 2% slower, and then you get your 48 gigs of RAM. So this one is still, even though it doesn't scale with voltage and it runs super hot, if you do get it working properly, it's the, it's the best kit, also the most expensive, but it is the best kit for an all-around max FPS single PC build. Now keep in mind though, I could have cranked the single rank ADI further if I wanted to, 
but I wasn't gonna go like crazy 1.6 suicide voltage just to prove a point. I used voltages for all these that any standard user would use with a little bit of airflow over the memory. Nothing crazy. Anyway, guys, don't forget, subscribe on the website. I'll see you in the Discord, and I hope you learned something today. And if you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down below what kind of memory kit you're using and your overclocking experience with said kit. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.